Uh, whoa, <laughs> we're back <laughs> with a new intro. Holy fuck, when Elmo flames were going, I lost my mind. Anyways, Jesus, Holy um, <laughs> we're back now. All right, John's Buds, episode 106. As always, your host, folks, Z, joined by my good buddy, Mr. At State of Hoppy. Hoppy number one, what the fuck just happened? And how are you? Uh, so what just and happened? My internet's there, already going, so that's weird. yeah, that part for the course. It wouldn't be a normal episode if it didn't. Uh, what just happened there, <clears throat> especially for those who are listening rather than watching, is the result of some douchebag rapper who like had like a five second strip of the old intro that they included in like one of their new rap songs. And it's like a free song that like anyone can use, but somehow they worked with YouTube and like got like basically stole our monetization for that episode because of it. I'm like, well, Isha, we need to change that. He's like, yep, I'm on it. And we had a couple of like weird ideas percolate for what we could do just for like a stop gap for the time being. And I'm like, all right, we'll just use Z's music, whatever. And then we had a couple of stupid ideas and then he was going to go off on it. And I just text him. I'm like, what if we just use the Elmo fire gif instead? He's like, I fucking love it. And immediately I'm like, there's two possible outcomes here. Outcome one, Z just pays zero attention and starts the episode normal. And we're like, holy shit. He, he just isn't even watching. Or he loses his fucking mind because it's the Elmo fire gif. So we got our answer. You were excited. It is whenever I go to just tweet a gif on Twitter, you know how it comes up frequently used. Like it like <laughs> suggests it's every it's the Elmo. It's by it's by far the gif I've tweeted the most in my spoke Z Twitter lifetime. Um, so that was wildly appropriate. Um, yeah, so that rules. That woke me up a little bit here. Um Wow. Yeah, I mean, that just put me on. It did put me uh, my, on the back foot here, but we're going to we're just going to just going to do it. We're just going to figure this out now. Um, lots going on. Uh, we are now exactly one week from me, in theory, showing up in Minnesota to take in the Frozen Four. Allegedly. Uh, there's some prospect news we've got to touch on, and I figured it might be a good idea at some point just to give an update on some of the prospects still playing in their respective playoff series. Um, I finally went through and updated my own uh, prospect roundup sheet, so that's up to date. Um, some games going on tonight, though, obviously. And um, off the jump, have you caught – any of the last uh, 20 minutes of the Rangers and Devils because holy shit, they may have no players by the end of the game. Five on five shit. line brawl. Five on five. Line, Ryan Carter redo. It, five on five. Uh, the only dudes got didn't get kicked out were VC and Curtis Lazar because they were the first two to drop the gloves. Rempy McDermott went. Keandre Miller fought. I was like, oh my God, Truba's. The, oh, it's wait. Talk, chaos. Talk, talk Rempy McDermott. It was a marathon. I think Rempy ate about 15 bombs through a couple of his own. How I don't know if they were. It wasn't quite on the level of like, you know, haymaker after haymaker. But McDermott did land a couple solid ones. But I mean, Rempy is just at this point eating so many of them. He just didn't really face them too much. But they went for like a minute, minute plus. But like. There's a five on five line brawl in the uh, the the TNT camera, or whatever, was only on Rempy and McDermott the whole time. Like there was a brief moment where they flashed to like Keandre Miller. Uh, I can't remember who the fuck he was fighting, um, which was funny. And then we, we got to get a couple minutes to talk about that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, then a couple of minutes later, Will Cooley and uh, and uh, Dawson Mercer fought in the corner. So there's another fight. Who knows how like the coaches are yelling at each other. So we could get like a Boudreaux, Patrick Watt type situation going. Hopefully that'd be great. We'd love that. Um, but it's complete chaos. And uh, the hockey world is loving it. The same, you know, the usual 
the usual suspects crying about it are obviously out like i don't watch hockey to watch this i'm like okay nobody actually cared or asked you but that's fine you can you can like i imagine being upset but i know what i'll do let me tweet about how this is so bad and such a problem what a weird what a weird thing for you just need people to to know how you feel about this i you know that they're like counters too like they're sitting there like watch him come in like yes yeah i know i'm, yeah. I'm <clears throat> i made a yeah. stand yeah um oh sick drink god i oh hey look at that oh, what flavor uh pineapple oh that'll be later for me i got the highly trinity going here i got uh pineapple and watermelon waiting but i'm i'm rocking peach it's my favorite in the mix pack beautiful Love How, that. when are we gonna get a high noon sponsorship it just feels right <sighs> yes yeah, I feel like we need a couple more YouTube hits before that starts coming in. Um, just need just need one or two more good highlight reels, and we're set. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, where should we start? Where do you want to start here? I just pulled up the outline. I, I, I got to lead in with because uh, you work in the medical field, even though you're working with like way more intense shit than just babies being kept alive when they don't have anything wrong with them, but. We got our fucking mm. bill in the mail from the pediatric clinic. And I don't know if you're familiar with this or if anyone listening has kids and is familiar. There's big concerns with like postpartum issues for the mom, just like mentally and some physically. But every time you go into the hospital for her, or for the baby, they have you fill out this form. That's basically, are you okay? Right. But it's a shit ton of questions. They like it. I spend like 15 minutes working on this thing every time we go in because she's like, no, you just answer for me and what you don't know, ask. And she pushed a baby out or downstairs. So I don't really have an argument. And mm. yeah. they, these fuckers have the audacity to charge us $21 per form that we complete that they mandate. And I am going to, destroy them i am going to make such a scene i don't think she's even going to bring me with to the next pediatric appointment because it takes them max five minutes to read the inputs and that, that's me being generous like if they've got like something going on maybe they wear glasses and readings a little harder it takes five minutes max for them to go over what it took me 15 minutes to do and they're charging 21 dollars for each one that we've done and every time they could simply ask, are you the same as before? And we would say yes. $21 for a five minute task. And again, that's being generous. Dude, that's. That's like 250 bucks an hour that they're charging for reading this sheet of paper. Ub fucking surd. Give me your medical. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah, you have to you have to fucking pay to be asked if everything how's everything going. No, <laughs> not and, even and, not and even and yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I already told her, like every time we go in, if they hand me like a document or like if there's something I gotta sign, I'm gonna be like, What are you gonna charge me for this? I need to know in advance so I don't fucking lock myself into some contract like human sent iPad on South Park where I end up getting bolted to two other people to power an iPad. Like Ugh. it is ob fucking surd. I am that very pissed crazy. off. I mm. it's already been an interesting day, but to have that be like what I walk into the house to, um, I'm lit up. We're that's that is legitimately outrageous. I'm so pissed. healthcare in America, baby. Love it. Yeah, this is the one time that I'll say that maybe Canada isn't quite as outrageously worse than the us than i thought yeah yeah i mean i'm not gonna get to asparagus or vanilla paste yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah let, let, as you said i you it was funny you were like i bring this up to you because you work in the medical field mm -hmm. i i work at a place where that happened i am not at all um you know i'm not by no means do people should anyone come to you with uh, any questions i am not um, I am in an office, but, uh, and I'm not going to get specific about where I work or what type of place it is, but, uh, one of the things that 
happens is like whenever patients need appointments, obviously insurance has to like cover it. And there's certain insurances that don't cover them coming in. But so there's like the self pay option, but it's crazy. They can't just say, yes, I would like, okay, fine. I will pay for it myself. They need their fucking insurance company to send them a letter of denial. <laughs> like, you, like, you know, you go back to your fucking insurance company. You tell them to tell you to go fuck yourself. And then we'll we'll let you in. We'll see you. Which is crazy. <laughs> People are like, can I just fucking come in for the appointment? No, no, no. You have to, no the insurance company needs to shit on you, actually, uh, before you do that. It's insane. Uh, but anyways, that's not yeah. what this podcast is about. No, but you're right. That is insane. That's le- yeah. that's legit. That's ludicrous, though. It's yeah, that, I, I had to air that grievance because holy <laughs> shit, it was gonna like eat at me this entire show. Yeah, and now I'm just gonna yeah. slow down nooners and numb the pain, and they'll probably charge me twenty one dollars each, and it's still way better bang for my buck than that bullshit. Yeah, um, they're they're actually watching this. They're gonna send you a new form. Are you an alcoholic? Thank you. That'll be twenty one dollars. Who who is it? Uh, I think it's uh, Jimmy O Yang. In uh, he's uh, Jin Yang in Silicon Valley. I don't know if you're familiar. Hilarious guy with his stand up or with his acting. But he there's this uh, clip that went viral early on with like the shorts and TikTok and everything, and <laughs> it basically says like, oh yeah, no, I just like to drink like wine and beer all the time. They're like, dude you're an alcoholic he's like is that what that means i thought it just meant i like to have a good time (laughs) and i feel like that's like the anthem for this podcast (laughs) oh yeah i don't and i don't know why this that reminds me of always sunny it's like oh dude they got they got mixers it's like no no no, charlie those are (laughs) it's just it's just diet coke like the mixer nope no booze they make those (laughs) always sunny yeah Oh, oh, you're just you're just having the mixer. <laughs> like what? <laughs> they got mixer. Yeah, yeah. They got, mixer drinks. Oh, they, they, they got screwdrivers. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a it's a it's a screwdriver mixer. It's a rum and coke mixer. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah Frank, They got they got screwdrivers. No, 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 Charlie. Oh, it's just the orange best. juice. Yeah. Just the mixer. <laughs> the best. That's good yeah. shit. All right, let's talk about hockey. Where do you want to go whoever, next? Whoever is asking about Shantytown, which I, I have been to, I need to know what whoever's getting at there. Maybe we'll circle back later. But yeah, Z, one that uh, anyone that hasn't listened to uh, Fellowship of the Rink today, we had Carson mm. Lambos on, guys, an absolute beauty. But this question here that I'm going to pose to Z from our boy Jason Howard is one that I addressed heavily there. Uh, I'll certainly weigh in, but I'm going to have you take the bulk of the load here, Z. Have you guys heard Buchigras keep comparing Zegras to Datsuk? Uh, no, but that sounds like exactly something. Or that sounds like you haven't that sounds, seen. That's the I don't listen to half of half the time that like those broadcasts are on. I've got headphones. No, no, like, no. It's, it's get... been like all over Twitter. Like it's been. Oh yeah, no, like definitely. It's gone viral, definitely. and everyone feels like they have to comment and weigh in on it, which is exactly what he wants. So he won, like that, and some makeshift version of uh, chicken parm. But no, he basically said that Zegris is the next Datsu. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a um, that's one of the more ludicrous overall in totality takes of our lifetime. Um, If you want to strictly talk about like, they're similar from like here down, you know, like just like wrists to fingertip. That's about the extent of their similarity because they both are two of the most skilled players we've ever seen. Datsuk won Selkies. No, Datsuk won Selkies. Not nearly Datsuk enough. had several, several seasons of over a point per game. Datsuk is in the the two guys that come up all the time. The two of the best defensive forwards of all time, Pavel Datsuk and Patrice Bergeron. In terms of like Selkie guys, like you have to have a certain amount of points. Up. There's certain guys who are excellent defensively only that are also forwards, which whatever. But those are the two that come up all the fucking time. So to compare the overall player, it's legitimately. Like it's almost 
that's certifiable. But, you know, if you're just going to talk about the hands, literally the hands, and that is it, like nothing else about their game whatsoever, then fine, I get what I you're saying. Okay, they but- both are fun to watch in shootouts. I'll, I'll give them this though. It's hands and creativity. Like they both mm, try mm-hmm. the shit that no one else will try. Like, I, I think you're maybe doing a little disjustice to Seegers. Basically, if we're just talking offensive output, I'm in like, sure. I can see him being the next Datsuk as far as what he can do going one direction. Going the other direction. It's it, like you said, non-existent. And Hey, if he develops that part of his game and psh, rumors are already spiraling that he'd be a great fit for the Detroit Red Wings. So Hey, maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Maybe uh, they'll bring uh, Mike Babcock back for a, a third go around. Dude, can you imagine if he got a hold of Zegers' phone? Think about uh, it. I fucking <laughs> God. I don't. I like it's. I can't even let my brain go there because it's actually scaring me. Um, but listen, like that's that comparison is right up. Bucci's alley. I I don't really hate Bucci. He he's getting very well. Okay, over the last like two years, he's gotten very weird on Twitter. Like a lot of people have, like with like yeah. political shit. I'm like, okay, I don't really like that anymore. Um, but he's an entertaining dude, obviously, and like he, fucking loves me, hockey, so I love that. But he, and I will say, I, I've said this before. I met him in Melrose at the greatest bar in Boston. It was a the largest time. and tightest pants in the same room at the same time. It's it's mm-hmm. it's like seeing an eclipse. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could you could have fit people in fucking Melrose's jacket. For me, pants. I I Butchergrass has gotten old on the broadcast because he literally says the exact same thing every time. Like if. If he doesn't say holy shnike, he's on a call. I'm convinced. Yeah, that's that's literally the first. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So, like, it it's just gotten old. And I respect he's the only person at ESPN for the longest time that tried to give any shine to hockey. Respect mm-hmm. the hell out of him for it. The guy knows hockey. Like, this Zegris and Datsuk take is for clicks, period. He knows it. We know it. Cool. Uh, He's a guy that I feel like would be a great hang, like grabbing beers with Bucci mm-hmm. Brown. Mm-hmm. I just don't like the, the biggest reason that I am attending the frozen four next week is so that I don't have to hear him on the call. <laughs> Especially, I mean, when there's as many East coast teams as there are, I can't, I'm so glad that I didn't see Quinnipiac against BC. I can't even imagine what was happening. Hmm. It was about, it, yeah, you could, it went about as well as, as you would expect there. Um, yeah. yeah. And can confirm again, I was at the bar and he summoned me over because I just blindly ordered the shots that I wasn't going to go over there at all. I just went like, yeah, there you go. and then he was like, come here. I was like, okay, <laughs> Fucking, we hung out for like 45 Dude. minutes. He is a beauty. He's great to hang out with. Uh, I'd gladly yeah, hang with him. Just don't want to yeah, listen to the broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like you said, it's gotten to the point. I'm like, all right, dude, that's just exhausting to be honest now. But like, whatever. I, like you said, it is relevant that he has advocated and put as much shine on hockey at ESPN as possible, and probably is like one of the biggest reasons. Hockey ever did even come back to ESPN in the first place because they had that going for them um, and a strong, at least one strong voice there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just again, like comparing the two players, if you don't want to, like if you want to just react, it is, I mean, it's still ludicrous no matter what, but like, you know what he's getting at because like, he's not going to tweet out, you know, word for word why he's saying, and he's obviously, like he said, part of that's for clicks and shit, but. Um, and it the, is the one, the one that got lately. Out. He did say that uh, puck drop for uh, the first game on Thursday next week, 4 p.m. in Minneapolis. Yeah, that <laughs> that one got me. Yeah, that'll get you. That'll. I, I think he did it on purpose, just because that's how much he fucking hates 
West college hockey, but whatever. It it worked. He got me. I'm not happy yeah. about it. You, know? you. you guys are right in the crosshairs. Bullseye. Best best hockey cities, Minnesota. Motherfucker. What can you do? What can you do? Um people still seem a little uh unsure. Can the Wilds still make the playoffs? Uh yeah, I mean I would say they are out. Um because yes, they are they're the same amount of game clubs as LA. One more game than St. Louis has. They're six points back of LA, three back of St. Louis. I think LA plays two playoff teams in their last, what is it, eight games. Um, so I don't know. I no, I would say no. The one the one thing that you put next, and if you want, we can <laughs> go in depth on it, but like uh the one that I that you put on the outline right next to that, all of a sudden. The week after, I was like, yeah, there's a big gap between, like, one team or two teams vying for the playoffs in the East and everyone else. All of a sudden, fucking Pittsburgh could absolutely make the playoffs. <laughs> well, I think the real question that everyone's asking, Z, has Gensel been the problem this whole time? Yeah, was is he? Is he? Crosby, 15 points in his last, what, like, six, seven, eight games? I don't know. That's, like, the best stretch he's had in the past several years. Ah. Some are saying Jake Gensel was the problem. I don't know. And yeah, I need to look at like the play? schedules. They could play Carolina in the first round. I know that would be insane. And here uh, I would be excited for a top ten pick. God damn it! Yeah, that was silly of you. Very silly of you. Either direction, either like Wild Pittsburgh. Like it's just like God damn it! They're really gonna piss us off, aren't they? Um, if they make but, the playoffs. I won't be pissed. Like whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the. The East is much more of a conversation to me than the West. Like, listen, Minnesota. No. People also are like saying that without like at least recognize that St. Louis is still in front of them. Like, it's like St. Louis like doesn't exist, and it's like they kind of just like kick the shit out of Minnesota almost every time they play. Like, I don't know why we pretend like they're not there. Like, they're not in front of us. Uh, but all right, that's fine. But all of a sudden, the fucking wild card in the Easter Conference, like. Washington in that second spot right now with 82 points. Detroit, 82 points with one more game played. Islanders, 81 points. Uh, and Pittsburgh with 79 points. Like, they're right there. I haven't looked at what their schedules look like. I have been on record, and I will say it again. I absolutely do not believe in the fucking Washington Capitals. It's asinine that they're even in the playoff. They're dash 35. Like, they're fucking... They have a minus 35 goal differential. It's fucking insane. Um... So I would have to look at like what there's the what they had like what games they have left. Um but all of a sudden, like it is a legit conversation. And I mean, even Buffalo's got their two points back at Pittsburgh. They've played one more game than them and two more than Washington. Like all of a sudden, it's like, all right, maybe it's not. There's actually kind of a race now. Um, and I mean, when you look at the teams vying for that second spot, one team has Sidney Crosby on it. And Sidney Crosby is in I fucking hate not playing playoff hockey games um, mode, which is terrifying. It is one of the most, well, yeah, no, just terrifying. When he is just, like, angry and, like, it's not manifesting itself in him, like, kind of just being an idiot on the ice and, like, being very emotional. And he's like, no, I'm going to be the best player on fucking planet Earth and put up eight points a game angry. It's it's so terrifying to watch as just like the opponent, and that's what he's doing right now. And um, help me, mom, I'm scared. But we'll see. But it's a very it very much in the conversation. And like again, la literally one week ago to the day, I was just sitting there like, oh yeah, no fucking chance. Anyone else is in the conversation other than like Detroit, maybe maybe the others. Mm -hmm. And then they all take turns sucking. Like it's I insane. Like, none of them want to make the playoffs. Uh, it and. Not just Sidney Crosby. You know who else fucking hates not playing in the postseason? Evgeny Malkin, who has yeah. four goals, two assists in the last four games. Everyone's on watch. And I, Penguins are not going to contend. They could absolutely upset a team. Like, no, oh, one, yeah. no one wants to play the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs.
playoffs. Now, if you got to choose between them and Tampa, yeah, I'll I'll take my chance with Pittsburgh, but I don't know, dude. Like that's a way different story than playing Philly or Washington. Right. I mean, Philly's just in third, like they're doing their that's the thing, too. They can even just fuck it, they don't even have to make just the wild card, like they could just surpass both Washington and Philly and be third of the division. It's fucking crazy. Yep, that's hmm. the Metro is insane. You got the top two teams, and then you have literally everybody else except for like Columbus. The Columbus is just Columbus. like playing in the AHL. <clears throat> I feel bad, and then getting them. and like getting their ass kicked by like in the AHL. like there's like. They're on like the Iowa wild level of AHL where they're just like, we're going to lose every game all the time. Even when we bring in good players, we're going to lose all the time because it's what we do. Um, and it's just like, all right, that's cool. I guess and that's, that's one way to do it. But yeah, no, it's, it's fun having the like race to make the playoffs. It like there's multiple teams. It's not fun when like, it's like, all right, like this team has the opportunity or this team does, and then they all fucking lose. You're like, Jesus Christ. Like, well, somebody fucking, like, <laughs> give your balls a tug for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, like, fucking, will someone just make the playoffs? They're like, I don't know if we want to. But, who? Yeah. Tampa's no. scaring me right now. Tampa, I can't, like, they're, I would say they're firmly going to be the, yeah, they're going to be in the wild card. They're 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10. They're scaring the fucking dog shit out of me. And like you might get them first round. <laughs> uh they're going. I know they're and I think like they're going to, and it's gonna be like fucking four one. Like they're just gonna kick the shit out of the Bruins. Would you agree though? Like in a weird way for Boston, it's better to just get a good team so you get the best yeah, oh, yeah. of the Bruins. Yeah, I mean, in theory. Um, oh, by the way, I just remembered. Guess who fuck this is going way back to the beginning. Guess who fucking Keandre Miller was fighting? John Marino. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. Well, I I can't believe I already forgot who he was fighting. Wouldn't have guessed that. Wouldn't have guessed yeah. that. Yep. Oh God. But hmm. yep. So there you go. It's uh interesting in the East. The wet listen, the Minnesota Wild. God bless them. They keep keeping themselves in the conversation, but the conversation is, could they actually fucking like squeak in and then get their fucking ass pulled? I hope. All right. Or I don't hope. I don't know. But like. It's like <laughs> trying to work your way into the inside joke that no one wants to let you in on. Like, mm -hmm. just just don't make the fucking play. You're going to get destroyed. And I know Leopold <laughs> wants it because it's still gate revenue, but like, at what cost? Like, is that really beneficial to your team? I I am the biggest supporter of, yes, playoff experience is helpful for any roster. Not if you're going to get swept. And mm -hmm. they're going to get swept. Yeah, I don't – yeah. I mean, it's just the matchups. You're like, oh, ew, 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 ew. Nope, no thanks. I don't want this at all. Help, help me. I'm scared. Um, that's what it feels like. It would, it would probably, uh, that's how that would go. Um, but yeah, in the East, very interesting, despite it also being like hilarious and like pathetic, but also still interesting. Uh, yeah. West, it's a done deal. I mean, I, I still think the Blues could snatch it from the Blues could do it. And like the Kings are so wildly inconsistent in the fact that their goaltending is what it is not. That uh, transitions us to a better topic. Yes. We're running it back, baby. Go first. Watch out next year if they can find a goalie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the key. Um, they need a goalie so bad. And, of course, Nodak does Nodak things and finds the best portal transfer goalie because that's the only thing they can do. Um, But Gophers went out in a bad way. The worst way for me, because they literally teased me with the 2 0 lead. I went into that game with like very minimal expectations. I thought it would be a good game. Hey, maybe they squeak by. You start to rip in the first period, my expectations change. Mm. I'm human. I, that one hurt. That one hurt a bit. Um, but they definitely lose some good players, especially when we talk Justin Close. Like, that's going to be a hard thing for them to replace in net. 
they could be bringing back the majority of their players. They've got a couple of seniors who have their COVID year banked so that they could come back. They do lose two of their leaders from that second line, second line that had 14 years of gopher experience on it, which is just insane to say. Um, Jimmy Snuggerud back. He is not going to the St. Louis Blues, and he is not pulling a Logan Cooley because he actually has attachment to this program and flat out said, yeah, hearing Brock Faber talk about what it was like to go back for his junior year when he could have gone pro, I'm fucking staying. Whereas Logan Cooley, again, love the guy. There was no attachment here. He he lived in Minnesota for less than a year. He, It's a lot easier for him to separate and go elsewhere when you got Jimmy Snuggerud, who's not only a Minnesotan, but his dad played for the Gophers and lost in a national title game against Harvard. Like, he wants to win that natty for the Gophers so bad, and he's actually, like, super locked in on being a captain, which is cool to hear. He also objectively needs to improve. First half of the year, sick. Like, I thought he was going to be firmly planted in the Hobie discussion, like be in the Hobie Hattrick group. Second half of the year was brutal. And he's admitted as much. Like, he's very hard on himself, but I don't know. What what do you think for next year, Z? Are the Gophers going to be a problem, or does it not matter because they don't have a goalie? No, I I mean, I think... Obviously, we'll see what happens with the goal. That's a big one to lose there. But I mean, even just just having Snuggerud back, it's like a different layer or a different level of like, oh, oh, like, because like at the beginning of the year, you're like, oh, he's firm. Like, he's going to probably at this point, the way that he was just ripping first half of the year, like, oh, he's probably going to like. They're not going to let him stay. <laughs> there, yeah, right. There's like, there's, first of all, there's no way he's coming back. And he's like Hobie for sure. Um, and then he petered out as the year went on. But like, you look at some of the guys that will definitely be back. I still think they're going to be an absolute problem. Again, we'll see what happens with the goaltender. But like, they're going to be scoring an insane amount every game still. When you just look at the guys they're still going to have coming back um, and some of the incomings. Um, Talk about that quick. Because that's got ties to you, right? Boston Bruins. Talk about Beckett Hendrickson and that Scandinavian stallion that he's paired up with that are both going to be coming to the Gophers together. Yeah, Beckett Hendrickson. I love Beckett Hendrickson. And he had a great year in the USHL. Dude, he follows um, all of our accounts. We need to get him to jump on with us. Bullshit. Yeah, he's a beauty. He like one of the best passers in that draft class. Like there's definitely holes with game, but like he also took yeah. major steps this year on a team that was pretty good in the USHL. Um, so that's going to be a big get to plus like, I mean, guys, I mean, just keeping it with Minnesota though, like Jimmy Clark scored a big goal in, uh, cool. in game one there. That was in a phenomenal goal. He's going to have an elevated role here um and we'll see what happens with like what's that he'll be the 3c unless unless it's not going to happen but unless the first round pick decides to go to minnesota there you go it sounds Uh, like all but sealed that he's going to go to michigan state we're talking charlie strammel here folks which is a bummer because i needed him to go to mankato yeah, so, so bad. Yeah, was... And gotta uh throw this one out there from Mateo. Gosh, I gotta go back a ways for this one. Here we go. Some Wisconsin boys weren't able to acquire their AARP cards, so they hit the back door to the portal. And what do you know? Hastings has already brought in two 24 year olds. It's <laughs> people think Loves that it. we're just like being assholes, and it's like, no, th- this is really how his brain works. Um, to pull it up. No, but either way, like Minnesota, I think they're going to be like, cause this year they would be, they go on just a streak of kicking the shit out of teams. And then there were games where you're like, man, you should be kicking the shit out of this team. They'd like, you gotta win. Then they'd go cold for a little bit. And like, there was some big turnover, some unexpected turnover too. Um, 
But now that you're not sitting here worried about guys like Jimmy Snuggerud, again, some of the incomings are going to be solved. We'll see what happens with the transfer portal. I wonder if they like aggressively go into that portal. I don't even know uh -huh. what goaltenders are in the portal. Um, if this happens, Z. Yeah, Matthew Wood would be an interesting one. That one was crazy to me, honestly. Like he probably could have gone pro because he's been sick at UConn since he showed up. Um, and like they've done a pretty good job recruiting over the last few years. So that one was a little bit surprising to me. Um, I don't I have to look at like their incoming class though to see if that like continued, but um this year, this has been the craziest, like, I think it was like a 12 hour period. It was like, oh yeah, blue chip in the portal, blue chip in the portal, blue chip in the portal. It's like, oh, it's, shit. It, it's, it's, it's ruining the game. Like the CCHA is going to be ruined by the portal. It's, it's a joke. And I don't like have any personal attachment to any of the CCHA teams. It's bullshit. I feel bad for them. Yeah. It's weird. Like they have to figure out some way to limit it because i mean it's not like guys are going into the portal for like like every year like it's not like th 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 that's not happening but i th I think it goes to a neutral arbitrator like are you going to the portal because you didn't get the playing time you deserved and you can prove it or because like i don't know one of your teammates hooked up with your sister i don't know like it's just ridiculous that and again, good for them. Like I have no ill will towards these kids, like using the rules, to their advantage, but like, look at a guy like pole camp from Bemidji. Like he shouldn't have a big freshman year like that. And then just immediately be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go to a real team now, which I'm not saying Bemidji's not a real team. I'm trying to get inside his head. I don't know. Ow, yeah. So. It's, it's, it's tough too. Cause like, It's college hockey. So it's like it, you're separating like the athletics part versus the college part. Cause like if people want to go to a different school, they transfer like if they can. And it's just like, it's so, I feel like it would be. There is an admissions process though. Like, right. Into the school. It's just like, I don't know. It's one of those things like it's annoying when it happens so often. But at the same time, it's like, is how can you really. Like, do you have any ideas like how to like limit it? Because it's crazy. Like, can you like? Because it happens like across any sport. Like, you can transfer from anywhere to anywhere and play. Like, it doesn't matter. And like, guys can transfer schools if they want to. Like, maybe some guys are just not having a good time at that school and they want to go somewhere else. Like, that's where it gets like so hard to figure out. Like, all right, how the fuck do we like? <laughs> How do we like put rules in? Now nah, you can't. You have to stay at the school that you don't like forever. Like you have to stay here now. Yeah, I mean, you're you're trying to solve a subjective problem with objective measures, right? Like it, it's yeah. it's there isn't a right answer for me. <clears throat> if I had to like start throwing darts at a wall, it would be something along the lines of: you commit to a school, you're there for two years. Period. You can transfer after that. The exception, if you want to like argue your way out, arbitration, whatever you want to call it, you can do so by basically saying, I literally didn't play this year or I got buried or like there's no chance for me here. I respect that, right? Like I, if, if there's no place for you there and the coach sold you on something fake, fine, go somewhere else. The program clearly doesn't care. It's better for you. Everyone wins. But if you commit to a school, you should be there for – it's almost like a contract, right? Like ELC in the NHL. Two years, you got to play there. And if you're not happy there, if you think you can go somewhere better and it's in your best interest, all the power to you, right? Like I want you to live your best life. I want you in the best situation for you. But to go in as a freshman – tear it up for a school that gave you a chance and then be like, all right, thanks. Peace. That just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah I don't know. It, it is crazy. Like this year in particular, it's just like the amount of like, not just the amount of players, but the big name players that are just ready to uh, move on. It's crazy. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, again, I don't know what goaltenders are. I have, I haven't even really, 
done any deep dive on like just how many guys are like any how many other notables are in there so like that's one way that you know if there is something in there but um yeah i, I don't know but drove. get rid of elcs get rid of the draft everyone is just a free agent from birth <laughs> it's gonna really suck for some of the teams that uh thought they were acquiring a nine-year-old up in the chl but oh well it's all right. There's always next year. Um, what what if what if they here. had a plan and they're like, "Hey, we're getting rid of the draft. We're gonna phase it out." And they're like, "But we have to honor any picks that were traded." So it's like, "Well, oh, fuck. We got like ten more years." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um, I don't know. Uh, quick one. Uh, worth touching on before we talk more Frozen Four and your trip out here. Russo has been saying the Wild are in contention for the Quinnipiac player. Do you like him as an NHL guy? Same here. Thoughts on Graf from the Quinnipiac. Yeah, I want to pull up his number. So Graf is – he has been on probably every team's radar the past couple of years. Um, Massachusetts guy, love that for me. Uh, but – he is phenomenal. And like Russo said, he, I think he like, they're like, I think that tweet said something about he narrowed the list down to like six teams. And it's because, because every team was like, Hey man, we really would like you to fucking come and sign here. Um, but he's a, uh, he can play. I mean, I feel like in the NHL, when he does make it there and he, if he becomes that full-time player, like he'll be probably on the right wing. He's a right shot. He can play center. He's played center back and forth in Quinnipiac, but he's got good size. Um, he's got good boots. Like he's fast, but like he's got, like he I've just has a no Good boots. I like that. Yeah. You ever heard that before? I mean, it works um, great in the draft too, right? Right. Yeah. There you go. Um, but I mean, fre- as a freshman at Quinnipiac, 59 points in 41 games this year, 49 points in 34 games. Uh He is an unbelievably smart player. Late bloomer. Address it, though. Address it. Is the competition comparable to what some of the other teams are seeing? For Quinnipiac? Yeah, what's their schedule look like? Yeah, they play a bunch of the big dogs out there. Okay, okay. um, I know there have been years where they literally get the two seed by default just because they didn't play anyone. No, they usually. I mean, they and they also out of conference. They schedule all the big dogs. Like they're playing all the hockey okay. teams. Okay. At least once they try I mean, to. Anyways, that means something this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but okay. you know, no, they're they're legit. So um, wild to be happy to have him. This would be a very good like college free agent pickup for sure. Like because he is such a smart player. That's why he gets so many points. Like he. Um, and he can score goals himself. He can make plays. Um, again, like, and he's got the size there too. He's another late bloomer, which is why he didn't get drafted in the first place. Um, but I mean, you can't like the points that he's putting up is outrageous. And like, he's noticeable every single time you watch Quinnipiac play. Um, so yeah, that would be a great get. I love Kyle Graf. And again, I think every team in the league at least made a phone call to see what he what his plans were um so it's gonna be one to watch for sure to to compare and to say compare wouldn't be fair but uh conversely let's talk about the uh boston bruins pickup minnesota monstrous human jackson nelson well i he is phenomenal like he rocks. He turned like, it on the back half of the year. Basically, as soon as Snuggerud stopped, he's like, "I got it, boys." He's like, "All right, don't worry, fellas. I'll I'll, I'll pick it up from here." Um, but yeah, I mean, he gives you a little bit of everything, doesn't he? Like, like, and I mean, you had like, was he six foot four, six five, six four, two hundred like twenty five pounds, and he's got those hands and he makes those plays. Like, he is fun to watch so i was thrilled he played like 11 years at minnesota uh <laughs> <laughs> it has his career with he's just like years. yeah i'm sick 
uh, but yeah, great. I mean, obviously, I think it was. Um, I mean, I was excited. Um, I did hear about it on Sunday. It was coming. It was pretty much done. I was too afraid. I I, I'm a, I, I don't know how people. Anyone that deals with like breaking things, I'm like, I don't want to do that at all. That's scary. I don't like that. I don't want to do that at all. I'm very scared of being the one that breaks anything, especially with my luck. Like I would probably they'd be like, no, it's done. You can. This is yours. This is your good. Say it. Like you could tweet this out, and it would it would I immediately face. But I know that's how that would go. Um, but yeah, Jackson Nelson. The way. And like this is something the Bruins have had to do historically, and they're very good at finding these college free agents because they never have high draft picks or they get rid of all of their picks. They're very aggressive in the college free agent market. So every year they're at least picking up one big one. Like the past couple of years, they picked up like Georgie Merkulov and like Brett and Bussey. Um, I mean, even like going back all the way to like guys like Tori Krug. Like they've had to be aggressive in the college free agent market to make up for just not having a lot of picks. And then when they do not having any, like any high picks. Um, so they've always been in the college free agent market, like pretty aggressively, like, I mean, all of Sweeney's tenure and then even before that. So um, wasn't surprised that they were heavy, heavy in on a guy like Jackson Nelson. Um, and I mean, his play just like over the course of the past, like dating back from the USHL, to now i feel like it was a guy that really had to figure out like how to be effective the way that he wants to play at six foot fucking four <laughs> like so some guys take a little bit longer obviously and do you think what is he 24 now um so we'll see what happens in terms of like the short-term future there but it was a very nice pickup obviously for the uh for the boston bruins and is he fucking fun to watch holy shit he's a player um so yeah, I was I was surprised to not hear more about like Minnesota pushing hard. Honestly, I mean, in fairness, they don't need centers, so <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it's funnier too because like, well, now I take it back. I was gonna say he could actually play for them this year because, like, you know, no playoffs, but. Then I remembered they signed like every single veteran they could, and there's no way that John Hines is going to play him over a veteran. So, yeah, what can good. you do? What can you do? Your hands, Winston, hands are tied. Yeah. Hands are tied. Um. Yeah. Let's see here. Um. But that, do you want to do like prospect roundup first, or do you want to talk like teams that made the Frozen Four and? the alleged news of you actually being here for that. Let's do that. Let's go there first. Let's. Oh, okay. We're going to start there. I said, I gave you an either or, and you're like, let's do that. <laughs> oh, I just I figured that was obviously the meant like the latter. Um, final four, baby. Frozen four. Sorry, not final four. Frozen. Frozen four. You have to get aggressive. About but actually, before that, I still can't believe they put the fucking regionals where they did. Like we talked about it last week. And at this point it has been exhausted. Like this talking it's point, it's still ludicrous. It's ludicrous. It is fucking ludicrous. It is a joke. And those games were deserving of mass of like big, big crowds. Whatever. Okay. It's just, it's, when the game switched from BC Quinnipiac to Michigan, Michigan State, I had just completely, with how crazy BC Quinnipiac was, like, I, my brain obviously was not ready to go to, like, a fucking, like, shitty practice rank for a regional fucking tournament game. I burst out laughing. I was like, holy fuck, I forgot that this is where these motherfuckers are playing. Michigan versus Michigan State. Practice freaking outside of St. Louis. Don't even in St. Louis. Outside of St. Louis, it's unbelievable. They were like, "Yeah, this is like." Did they? Do you think they like toured it? And they're like, "Yeah, this this is exactly where this feels right." 
this just feels right right this location for a fucking massive regional tournament game uh um, they actually they wanted to uh have their attendance percentages look better and then it still didn't even work <laughs> still yeah face plant yeah weird shocking how that worked out four seed umass hosts and can't even get a crowd because the way they decided to schedule the games is moronic. Um, mm. And the one for me, I, I got to ask, and this is uh, just going off of the bullshit Missouri regional, but not related to the rank. I, I'm very cautious generally about referring to someone that's double digits years younger than me as a jellyfish coward oh boy but jackson blake is a jellyfish coward who i did not want to see get hurt also don't feel bad if he did get hurt because i'm sorry play stupid games win stupid prizes yeah that was i mean and of course of course uh Nodak jock sniffer notorious uh mike grinnell is the one who's like the loudest like you hate to see that at the end of a game poor jackson blake like he got lit up in the comments <laughs> it was fun yeah and like i mean like you said i'm not gonna like go off it was i mean it was moronic at the same time, I can talk, like he's a teenager. He's pissed off, obviously. Goes right. to fuck it. It's totally. Get, but I still just like at doing at, uh, stupid to another player at the buzzer. I'm never gonna be okay with. Yeah, it's it's a gutless play that like I think even if he didn't end up getting gutless. hurt, like you at you ask him like a week later, he's like, yeah, that was fucking. I don't not even probably the next day, be like, hey, yeah, that was fucking dumb. I don't like. I just lost my fucking mind. And the fact that he ends up like that was bad. Like that fucking. I was like, oh shit, that probably hurt a lot. That's a that looks like an easy conky. Um, and like a plus or I don't know. Um, yeah, you do never want to see that injury, but you also never want to see the injury being caused because you were throwing a godless head at the end of a game that was over. Um, so it was a shitty fucking play all the way around. Like, it's like, dude, just fucking like, stop. No, don't do that. Well, and then people that, uh, wires so cross. Hang it, on. Yeah. The, 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 the like so over the top vitriol. I'm like, all right, like, no, no, no. Jesus and, and I, I'm not happy. He got hurt as a result. No. Yeah. 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 I immediately came out. I'm like, let me lead by saying, I hope he's okay. Also, what the fuck? Right. Yeah. But someone replied and is like, well, maybe we should have the same talk with uh, the Michigan player that was chasing down the puck. Like, no, we shouldn't. His job is to play it out and make sure that they don't get scored on. He doesn't know how much time is left. Jackson Blake knows exactly how much time is left on that clock when he tries to deliver that hit. I'm sorry. You anyone when you throw that hit, you know what you're doing. That's 100 percent. Well, you go, yeah, that's uh, not even, it's not even close. trying to play defense. Fuck him. Yeah, it's not, it's not even a real, it's like a, I have to play devil's at, not even, I have to be a dick uh, and reply here, kind of. Um, yeah, it's not the same thing. It's not remotely close to the same thing. Um, and shout out Michigan, man. I had my doubts going in, to be completely honest with you. And by the way, shout out former friend or former uh bud of judd <laughs> friend. former i was gonna say friend of the Y. I don't know why i was gonna go there um <laughs> former bud of judd marshall warren i believe that was the eventual game winner marshall warren um and was the, uh, yeah it was and oh wait what game do we get mm-hmm BC versus Michigan. That's fun. I'm at that's the headline, obviously, going into the front. Marshall Warren versus BC. That's all the talk. By the way, though, um, I was actually bummed out that that like 
Marshall Warren to like eventually play for Minnesota, like didn't end up being a thing because he's like just yeah. a cool, cool ass dude, like a very I interesting him a person. Lot on our episodes, he's a cool he dude. There, he's got a lot going on outside of hockey too. So that's always a bummer. I feel like he would have been so fun to have like on this show or hey there you go fellowship and ring how fun um, would it be if we brought him on this show though and just had him, him list off the reasons that he's just not why yeah yeah just shit on the fucking organization It'd be hilarious it's like well i'm, I'm not like you're right that. you're they're right give me a contract uh let's see their blue line is beyond full um yeah yeah sorry what what was the deal with those buyouts uh, also, I liked it when Dean was here better. He beat the shit out of Darby, and that's what I can get behind. Um, yeah, I'm out. I'm out, guys. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, you're right. I, yeah, it's louder, it's louder, Marshall. They, trade, the they traded the Kalen Addison. If they're going to treat him that way, why would I think I'm going to be any different? Yeah, no, there you go. Um, but shout out him, game winner. And then, literally, like, I don't know, half a second later, that assist. From Frank Nazer to was it Gavin Brindley? Yeah, through wow. the legs, Ow. cross ice, baby sauce on the tape was so outrageous. And to pull that off in that game and at that time in that game against Michigan State, that yeah. guy. That was certified. That was sick. What a fucking pass that was. He's he's another one just like Oliver Moore that like wild fans were really hoping was gonna fall to them in the draft. And he went like a couple spots early. Yeah. He is sick. He was. And like everyone, we all everyone that like watched all those prospects over the last few years, it was like this kid will go later than he should because he is smaller, but he is one of the smartest and most skilled players in that draft class, full of ridiculously skilled and smart players. So, but to pull that off at that time, like tape to tape, was outrageous. Sick. Yeah, it no, was so nasty. Uh, it's funny you bring up the the size because, uh, gonna keep plugging Fellowship of the Rank. Everyone go check it out. Last week we had the Middlestat brothers on. And we talked about Luke getting passed over a couple of years in a row in the draft and then finally being taken. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Something that they decided to pass over me. I'm like, how tall are you? He's like, 5'11". I'm like, I think we figured it out. <laughs> and he laughed. And then uh, I can't remember. I think it, Joe Smith might have chimed in. He's like, well, what about uh, Lane Hudson? And like, Luke and I are both immediately like, yeah, that's a different conversation. <laughs> that's a yeah, yeah. That's not he quite five eleven. He was a couple inches taller. He would have been like a top five pick. <laughs> he's, that's he's that's a, a kid. <laughs> that's a kid. If he's five eleven, he's like he's six six. That's that's the same. That's the, for late Hudson. Five eleven is like anyone at six six. <laughs> oh, shit. he's fucking unbelievable too. Um, but shout out. Other than the location, I feel like we had a bunch of absolute bangers for games. Like every game, it was sick. So, like, and this Most. is what we said last week. People were like, oh, this team got an E. I'm like, there, no, every fucking game, it's like, these are all like sick. Like, and it worked out that way. I don't think there were any like major, huge blowouts off the top of my head, but like, such good hockey. If BC loses that game to Quinnipiac, how much blowback does uh, former Minnesota Wild that was never Minnesota Wild Gabe Perot get? Yeah. I mean, couldn't show up. Couldn't do anything. You know? fucking... Literally could not. Mm, you hate to see it. And I, Will Smith must be fucking thinking the Lord. That was the dumbest cross-checking penalty I've had. Like, it was like, dude, you at no point were you ever getting – that was like he took three steps back and then fucking, like, lunged into the cross-check. Like, are you shocked you didn't get away with that, bro? And by the way, Ram Pecknall going off about BC diving in the third period – 
worked because there were like four of the clearest tripping penalties from Quinnipiac, like in their own zone that would have immediately resulted in like breakaways or two on ones with like Will Smith, Gabe Perot, Cutter Godier, like all of the top dogs. And the whistles went immediately in the pocket. And I was like, that is fucking how you work the refs. That is phenomenal. That, like you just call them out. Yeah. Oh, that, that's totally. That looks like Dallas, Minnesota, 2023. <laughs> there you go, baby. All right. We're uh, on the same wavelength again. Um, it I gotta was crazy. Ask, but objectively, especially because you have no stake in any of these players long term, based on this season alone, if this is all that you had ever seen of all four players, who's going to be the best NHLer? Gabe Perot, Ryan Leonard, Will Smith, Cutter Goche. Uh, I'd probably still go Gauthier because it's between, honestly, Gauthier and Leonard, but I'd probably lean Gauthier because I think Gauthier has another level of goal scoring and he's got the size, he's got the wheels and like, he can give, he can play center. He can play wing. I think he'll be best suited at wing because he can be an absolute sniper and being just a prick in general. But Ryan Leonard has just over the course of last season, there was a, so much, it felt like there was like public scouting outlets or whatever. So much pushback against Ryan Leonard because he was just like a fucking maniac on the ice. That's and like, want. That in today's right, NHL, but like a, want that. <laughs> right, and it was like less, less of his legit skill, which he more than has. He's had um, some great highlight reel plays this year. He's a phenomenal Just hockey him player. dancing through people out of the corner, like oh here you go backdoor tapping. Oh yeah. look at that, Gabe Perot gets a goal, even though Ryan Leonard should get credit for that goal. <laughs> yeah, right. Um. What, so what, there what, was, uh, Will Smith hate like just because he's like a little wider than you'd expect Will Smith to be or <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's the only reason. Um, no, I think Will Smith, he's going to be a fucking player and a half. I mean, that's the thing we picked for ridiculously good hockey I'm, players. I'm, um, no, no, no. With, with Will Smith. Oh, because he's I in San Jose. Got it. Yeah, that's it. Um, he's going <laughs> to. I think it'll take him a little bit longer to be able to like fit into the NHL with like, cause I mean, his best trait is that ridiculous playmaking, but he can like, there are games where he will get nudged off the puck. I think he's going to have a longer runway to be like, to hit his peak. And it's kind of more of a question. Cutter Gauthier to me, it's not a question. He's going to step into the NHL and be a fucking player and a half. Ryan Leonard, if his goal scoring or his skill doesn't like, pop immediately he's got four other things that he does that he can be a valuable contributor um will smith for me like he's going to be great i think the the runway is going to be a little bit longer it might take him a little bit longer just to adjust to the nhl and even then um you know in the past like last year he was phenomenal in his draft year but like as far as it is like, man, there are a lot of years where he looked pretty one dimensional and was just like trying shit that was never going to work. Um, and then he had no like plan B, but I still think he hits at a very high level in the NHL because he is insanely skilled. He is a dynamic playmaker. Um, and then Gabe Perot, like the ceiling is insanely high because yeah, he's got, ridiculous playmaking the hands are insane and he's very smart the skating's going to be a problem in the nhl it will be that's just a fact the thing is so interesting is like we haven't seen them apart <laughs> for like six years like, so, it's fucking insane. See, there's you stole you stole my transition here because i'm going full bucci here and this is a little abstract like just play along with me okay if there's a way, because like value is obviously disproportionate on the initial trade, but let's say Sharks defy all odds and take the first overall pick from Chicago this year. It's not going to fucking happen, but play along. It's impossible. Chapman won't allow it. 
What if there was a way to trade that first overall pick, a.k.a. Macklin Celebrini, for Ryan Leonard and enough on the side to, in tandem, also trade for Gabe Perot? Do you trade Macklin Celebrini for both Ryan Leonard and Gabe Perot to throw them into the NHL together with Will Smith? You have to. I mean, you don't have a choice. Like, you know, you're like you lost it. <laughs> you can't. Like, what do you mean? It's like, like, really, like, obviously, we've made this trade. Obviously, everyone understands this. And everyone's gonna be like, yeah, no, we get it. <laughs> yeah, next. All right. That's not even breaking also, news. Also, also, going off of my completely made up uh, premise, Celebrini with Ovechkin to break the record. That sounds fun. Mm. No, it doesn't. It sounds horrible. It sounds just <laughs> terrible to me, to be honest. But uh, in all seriousness, like you, you are the GM of the Sharks, and it is your choice. Do you want Macklin Celebrini, or do you want the other two to pair with Will Smith forever? No, you you have to take Celebrini. I figured. Yeah, he's yeah. quite good. It's it's fun to it's fun to like watching him against the Gophers hurt. It was painful. He's a piece of problem, <laughs> dude. He is fucking unbelievable. He's like, I swear, he can't score a goal, but like every assist <laughs> he has is just like I mentioned with Leonard to Perot earlier. It's like he is scoring the goal for like he, he's ricocheting the puck off of the guy's stick and he doesn't even know he's scoring the goal. It's beautiful. He yeah. is a problem. Like Celebrini, it's crazy. Like he, he, he literally is good at every part of hockey. Like he's good at everything. Like there's no, there's not one thing that you're sitting there like, oh, this might hold him back from being filthy in the NHL. I think it's like, no, nope, he's fine. He can do literally everything. He's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And like, he hasn't even showcased the absolute rocket launcher of a shot that he has. Like the one timer that he possesses is an absolute joke. And he hasn't even had to like pull that out in the fucking NCAA tournament. <laughs> he hasn't had to. He's just like, yeah, I'm. It, we're keeping that a secret. We're, we're just we're gonna safe. keep that. We're gonna save that one for the big time. And oh. yeah, so that's gonna be a sick game. BU Denver. Holy shit! I, mean, I mean, all the games are gonna be fucking phenomenal. Right, but but talk talk Denver to me because like that seems to be everyone's sweetheart team. Like everyone is on the Denver bandwagon. Yeah, I mean, and and when it comes down to like a bunch of fucking Boston teams making runs, everyone's like, okay, everybody else, we like them. Oh, the other choice is Michigan. Fuck them, Denver. <laughs> we want we want Denver. <laughs> this is the only team we care about. That's so um, weird. so uh, Eric Vigo, uh, one of the insiders for the Gophers, he uh, asked us for the Fellowship of the Rank episode to like assign a beer to each of these teams, and immediately I'm like. Denver's Coors Light. Yeah. No one, no one is going to get excited about Coors Light. No one is going to have anything negative to say about Coors Light. It, it is the most neutral team in all of college hockey for how good they have been. Like, if they were just a little bit east, they would be hated by North Dakota and Minnesota and Michigan. If they were on the East Coast, they'd be hated by the Boston schools. But they literally are in the battle of the West and East hating each other, they, they just like sit on the outside and like dominate every year. And everyone's like, Oh shit. Yeah. Denver forgot about them. Yeah. And again, like last week I told, I was like, I'm going to just pick Denver because like the amount of guys they have that are just out. Like, they're top nine forwards. They're like, yeah, right around. Like, if they're not a point per game, they're still like putting up 15 fucking goals. It's just like, and the thing that's been so impressive about like them beating UMass and Cornell is like, those, first of all, those are two pain in the ass teams to play those first two rounds, especially Cornell. What did we say about Cornell? I was like, why are people sleeping on Cornell? Like, they are the biggest pricks to play against on planet Earth. They hit all the unders um, and they've got, they usually will just deploy like a bunch of six foot four mutants to kill people on the back end. And like, they pretty much just gone as far as they have. 
like playing that way. But the thing with Denver is they they win two close games, like two one in double overtime versus UMass in Western Mass, and then again Cornell biggest pain in the ass to play against in this tournament. Like them, I Western Michigan. I was I thought they had it, dude. I thought they were gonna fucking pull it off. I, need, I, I needed, thought they were I gonna needed, fucking pull it off. I dude. needed Western Michigan versus Michigan so fucking. I thought they more. were gonna do it. Oh. I, they were right there, dude. That they, would have been yeah. my life. If if Michigan had to play Western Michigan, oh my god, that would have yeah. that game would have been insane in front of yeah. twelve fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyone sleeping on Denver, I would, I again, I would strongly recommend you stop doing that. Consider they won the national championship a couple of years ago. They go to like at the very least, they go to the quarterfinal every fucking year. But the fact that they won two razor thin, very close games, that's a problem because they love winning games six nothing. They love putting up fucking six packs. Like that's just what they do. Yeah. But when they're demonstrating, like, oh yeah, when it gets close, no problem. Like we can win those games too. They can beat you every fucking way. And Zeev Bouillon is kind of good. If he if he has a monster final four here or frozen, god damn it, frozen four. I think he solidifies. Scouting? I think he solidifies going no later than like eleven. There might be a team that's like, I can't possibly take this skinny offensive defenseman in the top ten. But like at this point, the season he's had as a fucking 17 year old def- uh, freshman defenseman on Denver, it's undeniable. Like, this kid is ridiculous. Um, yeah. But yeah, I still, I'm going to just, I couldn't, as a Boston guy, I would have taken one of the Boston names. I didn't really want to be that big of a fucking homer, but I do still strongly believe in Denver. And it's crazy to me that like so many people were just like, yeah, they'll probably like get to the frozen four and then immediately lose to BU. It's like, have you, have you seen what they've done this year? And again, just the fact that they've won these two close games, it's well, wildly impressive. Hang on though. While I hit the pause button and grab a refill quick, we're not pivoting fully to prospects for the wild yet, but just go off on, Rieger Lorenz in particular, what you've seen from this year and his impact and what people should be watching for in this frozen four. Rieger Lorenz, again, I feel like every time we talk about the prospects or just college hockey in general, um, I've had to bring him up. He had a, for the first time in his life, his freshman year, that was the first quote unquote bad season of hockey he's ever had. First of all, just playing as like an 18 or 19 year old for Denver on a team that's got national championship aspirations every year. That's a tough job in and of itself. Um, I think the first two or three games last year for Denver, he did have one or two goals. So it started looking good. Um, Then it got cold for a little bit and he just did not have the freshman season he was hoping for this year. He comes back and I mean, he's like, for a kid who his entire hockey career, he was looked at as the guy. He was a big fish in a small pond in like the leagues that he was playing in, no Uh This year he came in, he's killing penalties, playing defensive hockey. And like, I think he scored like three or four shorthanded goals this year. Um, he's still like in the middle six. He's not even like a top line guy. Finishes the year with like, I think 13 or if I should pull it up because I have it up actually. Um, there it is. Finishes the season or at this point, he's got 42 games this year, 15 goals, 73 shots on days, a plus 19, 15 blocks, 10 penalty minutes. And yeah, he's got three shorthanded goals. Like he's got ridiculous hands. His shot is an absolute joke. And looking at some of like the assists he's been pulling off, like he's going on the four check, he's winning pucks, like he's playing and producing and just being effective in all three zones. Um, and just watching what he's done this year versus like what could have happened after a disastrous, realistically, his, oh, well, his freshman year at Denver did not see. go well. Fr- freshman year was disastrous. Didn't put up the points. Didn't get the minutes. And he didn't hit the transfer portal. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> huh. Oh, no. Crazy. Oh, no, I wonder where this is going. But um, even, even in the first two games of the tournament, he didn't find the score sheet. But game one finishes with two block shots, blocks another shot against Cordell. Like he's just finding ways to be effective, even if he doesn't produce points. Um, so just again, I feel like he should get a lot of credit for his sophomore season and the bounce back year that he had, because for a kid who, again, like every season, every year that he's played hockey, every team he's been on, he's like two points per game, absolute stud, go-to guy in the first power play unit um and like not really having to do anything else but this year he's really showcased the fact like just his ability to play in any situation and be effective and the fact that he can do it but he's not scoring is huge so i was very happy for him and again even though he's not put, he hasn't put up any points so far the first two games of the tournament he's still finding ways to be effective and i think in the um in the NCHC, I think he had like eight points in the four games, like that tournament. So um, I got to pull up. I th- was it Oma? Was it the final that he just went off? I can't remember. No, he did score in the final, the 4 1 win against Omaha. And I think it was maybe it was the St. Cloud, the 5 4 win that he had one and one. Maybe he had a couple of assists. I can't even remember. But either way, he's found a way to be effective. Um, and especially as the year has gone on in big games. So shout out Ray Lorenz. I love this kid. Like th- he gets slept on at this point too, in the prospect pool, just, and it's a, it's a good thing because that means you have so many other like blue chip prospects in your pool, um, that are doing insanely impressive things, but he should get a whole lot of credit for the, uh, the season that he's had. So shout out Ray Lorenz. I'm pumped that he, uh, that he's going to have an opportunity to play in the Frozen Four. We love that. <clears throat> then last piece here on the Frozen Four before we get into whatever else you have for prospects. Your alleged arrival. I don't even know what's going to happen. I mean, it's good. Probably good thing that uh, Joe O'Donnell's going to be on a road trip because you might die upon meeting um but we got some people chiming in since you were unwilling to make a mailbag post so i threw up uh people giving suggestions for what you can do while you're here um pretty heavy pouring in of a place called tom reeds not Hmm. sure i don't know Hmm. um we'll see i don't know maybe we'll have to tag him in the post be like so what does it take to get like a reserved table just to make sure he can really experience this um but see i mean let's hear from you what do you want to find in minnesota are you looking for dive bars do you want to have a juicy lucy do you want beer do you want randomness i don't know what are you trying to find look it up I'm looking to find two things in Minnesota. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, and, and, and NXC doesn't count. Because that'll be a oh, thing. Number one, I'm hoping to find myself in Minnesota. Fishing Quest. Find me. Just really get to know myself a little bit. Number two, I'm trying to find love in Minnesota. Okay. Um, that's it. No, uh, the only thing I know is Tom Reeds. <laughs> I already knew that before people were suggesting it. So I was like, <laughs> fuck, I need like something else, dude. I can't just like, Hey, I brought my, brought a sleeping bag. You guys mind if I just crash, just crash here for the, the uh, next, like, am I crazy days? for thinking that dive bar is really the only thing that you're craving? Or like, is there anything in general? that you're looking for or anything else you've even vaguely heard of about Minnesota besides the mall of America. Cause we're not fucking going there. I do not need to go there. That's for sure. Uh, no, I have nothing in particular, not even like dive. I don't care. Like, I guys want to go to Minnesota, get the Minnesota experience. I'm going to usually whenever I go anywhere that isn't Boston, which like, I guess like I never go on like a, vacation or whatever like i just i never go places 
And usually when I do, I'm like, I need like 90% of the time, I'm probably just going to be like chilling here. Just like hanging out because I'm tired. I'm very tired all the time. Um, I'm going to not be that guy. I want to see as much as possible. And I just don't want to leave without, or I don't want to leave and have someone be like, you didn't go that you were there for however many days and you didn't see this thing. So yeah, I want to see dive bars. I want to see like, the stereotypical shit other than Mall of America do not need to go there. Don't care. Yeah, Don't no, care at all. Yeah, that's not happening. That but one like, we can leave off like, the list. Like Min Minnesota isms. Like, do you need a juicy Lucy? I, I don't know. Don't are, even know what that are, is. Are pull tabs a thing in Boston? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a couple of that I found that really fun. Because they're like, they're a cult activity out here. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, uh, Juicy Lucy is a burger where the cheese is inside of the meat patty instead of on top. I don't care about that. No, yeah, that'll I make me it. that'll make me feel upset. That'll probably. be that'll be references that a lot of people pull up. Let's see if I go through the list so far on the X slash the Twitter, which again I put it up today, so don't have. I will say this: I don't give a fuck about like. If you don't have this food, I don't give a fuck about food. I do not care about food. Liquid diet is, is going to be right. is so going to be the move. Most Lucy's. We don't care about Matt's bar. We don't care about uh, the no. Well, Matt's bar. Let's let's hold our horse. It said it's, bar in it. Matt's, so. Matt's. Yeah, but every place has alcohol. Grow up. I like that. <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, must see. Her Brooks statue outside the X. Well, we're going to be there, so we're good there. Yeah, that's um, easy. This person literally gave me one for every single one. All right, Chris Conrad, shout out to you. Papa Con 26 on uh, – Sounds hilarious. Twitter. Um, so the must-see is Her Brooks statue outside the X. Best yeah. dive bars, Brunson's Pub. Best pub food in TCS. He doesn't care, so that doesn't help. Um, breweries, St. Paul Brewing, Original Hams Brewery. Interesting food Mancini's for eclectic St. Paul dining. You don't care anything. Tom reads for pregame and postgame. Yep. That's happening. We got the one thing. The one thing I fully need to do is like, it's it sounds really funny. Just like walking around. Like I was like, oh, yeah. even in Boston, I will still be like, da, 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 da. <laughs> fucking like, Oh, I learned. Around. I learned. We, we walked yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, dude, that was the worst. So, again, I don't oh, hey, make hey. plans. I don't do anything. So, so how do you know the it phone? was so, you're like, what do we need to see? And I was like, I don't know, dude. I fucking, like, oh, hey, hey, uh, look, this is the bar that I ran into Matt Boldy at. That's cool. Oh, hey, this is the place that uh, Ray Bork owns. Uh, yeah, oh, I've yeah. seen RA passed out on that curb. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we had a great. I was like, I'm gonna take you to a bunch of places that like it's fun to. to yeah, pretty much here. People just like hang out. I don't know. People like hanging out here. <laughs> so fucking, this is where we're going. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited to actually one make the flight. Um, but just like be there for the first time after. First of all, doing this oh, wow. show for fucking two years now but just following wild hockey in general it's it, unfortunately i'm not going out there to take it a minnesota wild game this year because that like it would have been like all right that wouldn't be fun different this isn't as fun um, you won't do it but, next year either because next year when you come out it's gonna be for the state tourney so it's gonna be a while before you yeah. see a wild game yeah true that's a good point yeah i am limited to one. Oh no uh, we're not gonna fucking bring nope. that one up. Uh, we're gonna nope. we're gonna let we're that leaving, one leave that where it lies. Cosgrove, thank you though. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, um, that's dark. It, what what is it really? Just dive bars for you as far as places to go besides Tom Reed's? Do you want to see a brewery? Do you want to just go to any physical bar that exists? Like, are we trying to like? Yeah, you can do the tally marks on your arm for every different drinking establishment <laughs> you go to. <laughs> That, yeah, I I have no. I, <laughs> I literally had the oh, only place that I've ever heard of that I was like, I have to go to Tom. It's the only place that I know of 
this Tabri. That's literally and well the X. That's it. That's the two places I'm like, if I don't so man, we, if I don't go to either one of those, that's a real failure of a trip. What so we, we, we need to get them to reserve you a table. We do. That's that's basically it. This is the crap. We'll see. This, we'll this, see this, this will be what I clip for you to do the the episode promo post and just be like, Tom Reeds, help a guy out. I don't know, man. Give, give your pitch. We'll why, should, why should they save a table for some rat scumbag Bostonian? As a wise man once said, his name is Kawhi Leonard. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> so that should work. That could probably, I mean, he won an NBA championship after saying that. So, oh, and I mean, table we could bring, doable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you watch that and not fucking like, yeah, no, okay. Table. <laughs> <Set it down. laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. No, I, I have nothing else. Cause if I was, if I'm Tom, Rhea, if I'm Tom or Reed, I'm not going to do that. So. I'm a fun guy. That's about all I got going for us. Um, but I have no idea how it's going to go. I have a feeling I'll just be like putzing around. And then it's as the night goes on, I'll just be meeting more people. And then they're usually the way it goes. Like your spokes are like, yes. And they go, ooh, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Face reveal. Oh my god! For fucking years, that was so funny. It was like, yeah, no, I know, I yeah, this is, I, my face has been out for a very long time, but that's fine. Um, I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna let people. I have no plan other to to just go where I'm told we're going, and that's where I'll go because I don't like being like I want to go see this. I want to go see that. I mean, I don't it, care. What, what's your are, are there people that you just need to meet? Like, I know Joe O'Donnell's off the table. I don't know if Ryan Carter is going to be on the road or not. Like, hmm. who who is there that you're like, yeah, I need to meet up with this person? Um, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to be, I want to sh- put the bar too high, but like either like Kirill or Bill, you know, like Kirill, Capriza, Bill Guerin, you know, I feel like that's pretty low. Like that's easy. That's not asking too much. Um, especially considering they're going to be there for sure in Minnesota while we're there. They're no, definitely not going to be on the road. You don't think that Marcus Johansson's within reach. I think we're being reasonable. No. I, if I saw Joe, I'd be like, you're welcome. I told them it's Jojo. You're welcome. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. have words with that boy i i i only know one that i feel like needs to happen and that's jesse pierce oh yeah need it but there's there's several there's several that we'll figure out and i'm sure you won't even look at your phone the whole time so you won't see any of them anyways so that's a good point that's a good point um yeah i am very excited it's an early fucking flight, so we'll see. So that means I'll just do what I usually do and not sleep before. I mean, um, we just, wouldn't want uh, you to not be yourself. Right. Right. I'm not. Yeah. It's a, you want to be like false advertising. So um, it's going to be something. Uh, again, as I tweeted out last week, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm kind of like afraid. <laughs> like, in theory, I do have a flight home. Whether I am on that flight or not, is we have, we we don't that we can't confirm. We can we have no idea. Um, In theory, but we'll see. Uh, looking forward to disappointing whoever we meet in person. They're all like, yeah, this is yeah. No, we this is this wasn't as fun as as what was uh, advertised. So yeah, I'll just be hanging out in places that people are and strolling around minnesota just by myself just like walking around <laughs> you're for sure oh. the guy too that like you not out of ill intention but you'd be the guy that just like by virtue of how you engage through your cell phone you'd be at a place for like an hour and then like 15 minutes before you leave you'd like throw out a post like oh hey this is where i'm at 
<laughs> Probably. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's going to be great or or not. I don't know. We'll find out. We will find out. All right. Then we'll wrap up with any prospects that you feel need to be discussed. So this isn't the typical, we're going to find something to say about every prospect. Who needs to be discussed? Well, I mean, a, a couple, we like, like we haven't even really actually touched on it, but Charlie Strayville officially entered the transfer portal. Um, not overly surprised given how this year got, I mean, like last year it is what like, you know, that was a, that his freshman year doesn't even factor into this. The fact that this year went how it did not shock at all. Um, <clears throat> it was tough, dude. Like he got moved to the wing, firmly supplanted fourth line. There were games where he was playing well, but just never really found his stride, obviously. So he finishes his career at Wisconsin, 68 games, eight goals, 20 points, 79 PIMS, again, like 31 blocks, 83 shots on net, dash 14. It's just a tough year, it, especially given the fact of how good Wisconsin was this year. The fact that it also did not translate to him having personal success, not overly surprised. Uh, Sounds like yeah, he'll go to Michigan okay. State. Let's factor in some details, though. First, got hurt early in the year. That definitely didn't help with a new coach. Two, mm -hmm. he's not 35 years old. Three, it's one of those things where not just being put on the coach's list, not even the coach's list, but like not being high on the depth chart due to the injury. You've also got a guy coming off of that bad season. Like everyone's talked about his freshman year because he was dog shit. And you really don't have a chance to like squash that. Like you just come in, don't play and watch the team be successful. Like that's just a bad formula for having a good season. And I'm regardless of where he goes, like I'm excited to see him in a new environment. Um, it, it's probably for the best if he doesn't go to the Gophers yeah. not because I don't want him. I'd love to have him, but can you imagine the psychological damage that would be done if Jimmy Clark played higher in the depth chart than him at any point in time, seventh rounder and first rounder from the same draft class that would sting. Well, even just that, I mean, like if he were to go to Minnesota, like forget whether or not Jimmy Clark's there and higher in the lineup, just like he already has eyeballs on him. Given the fact that he was a first round pick, everyone considered him a big reach as a first round pick where he was taken. The guys that were taken after him, then he goes to the, Biggest school in the state where he was drafted in the first round. Like, no matter what, he's got even more pressure, more eyeballs than he did this year going into his sophomore year Wisconsin. So I think, yeah, no, I think it would be in his best interest, obviously and not to end up in Minnesota. But that's um, another and Michigan State's thought. not a bad place to land. No, but if I that is indeed where he goes. There's more eyes there still than, like, we talked about all the great players leaving the CCHA. What a great place to land to like quietly under the radar, get a ton of minutes, play a prominent role, be able to build some confidence going in and playing against objectively lesser competition, doing so either with Mankato to just be ingratiated immediately by the fans that you replaced Mike Hastings or St. Thomas would have been pretty fun. Yeah. But it's going to be Michigan State from what everyone says. And as long as Matthew Wood goes to the Gophers, I'm good with it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, he's got history with Nightingale at Michigan State. Right. Um, so we'll see where he ends up. Either way, it was it was weird this year, like, going in for him. I was like, all right, this is kind of like a restart for him, new coach, like, new team overall. It's like, actually, not really. This is a full – the full like restart, like change of scenery, everything, wherever he ends up against sounds like the obvious direction is Michigan state. We'll see what actually happens. Um, be interesting to see if it's just like somewhere else. Cause everyone's like, yeah, Michigan state. I'm like, did anyone, did, we just decided. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll see. Um, but hopefully he can just leave the past two years behind him because he is legitimately such a fucking good hockey player like 
people forget going into his draft year, first of all, made two world juniors as a, a, a double underager and an underager, and then was widely considered a top 15, no, no doubt pick. So, um, there is legitimately like well-rounded legit skilled hockey player in there. And it's just like, he could have been had like a med mediocre year and he still would have got shit on by people who just you know, lose their minds with the draft. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, and then the only other one that like we didn't touch on that we should real quick, just before the brief, briefest roundup of all time, Liam Ogren officially assigned the Iowa wild. Huge. Oh, Erica, Very excited. It would have been so much cooler if we had like a highlight reel of him to throw up for this. Yeah, that's on me. Game. Hand up, my bad. <laughs> um, hope maybe I can hopefully you know get that done in the next day or two. They don't play for their two days, so I have two more days before uh, that happens. But they've got they've got eight games left in their season. Um, but the big story, really, regardless, is the fact that like you know in the past we've talked about Riley Height being in contention for the roster spot next year. The fact that he's coming to North America means that he will be very much in contention to make the opening night roster. I would be shocked if he went back to Sweden next year after coming back to North America. <laughs> so who's getting insane. traded? Goudreau or Hartman? That's the thing. That's where it gets interesting with like the lineup because there's literally zero spots for anybody. Um, and all the conversations like, no, these are legit up for grabs, whether or not they are. Yeah, we'll see. But um I mean, Liam Ogren is not a guy I even like really imagine having a whole lot of time spent in Iowa in the first place. So that's interesting to me. But um, either way, we'll see what he can do in the last eight games. Very curious to see who he plays with um, because there's just an interesting mix down there in general. They, they have, they went from being like firmly in a playoff spot like a couple months ago to unbelievably out of the playoff race, like so far out. They're going to miss the playoffs by a million points. It's fucking insane. Uh, part of that was the injuries, though. So, uh, But either way, exciting days in North America. We're going to see him get a couple games in Iowa. Um, and I, in theory, be in, like, big-time contention for a roster spot next year, which means, like, a lot of fucking moves to make. Um, but, yeah, I at least want to at least mention those two because that's, like, news in the last 48 hours. So wanted to do that um last thing chl playoffs are going on hunter hate saginaw spirit up 3-0 on servak petrovsky and um the owen sound uh attack they are uh, they finally had at least one close game you gotta talk and, about that though but petrovsky no longer part of the pool right that's right they let him go they let him walk apparently they just decided he was to like sign him. He was a favorite of yours based on yeah draft spot. Really interesting. And I actually completely forgot about that for a while. The fact they're like, yeah, it sounds like they're just gonna not sign him. I don't know why. I'm curious to know. He's not the logic right? and the thinking. Um, I mean, this year it's been up and down for him. Like he finished the season with 57 games, 55 points. Um, Owen sounds a very average team, like squeaked into the playoffs more or less. Um, he had a couple injuries throughout the year that held him back, <coughs> but he's such a young player. Like one of the youngest kids in that draft class, not last, or was that two years ago, I guess. Um, and I mean, an unbelievably well-rounded player and again just interesting that they decided that that was not a path they're going to go down so we'll see where he ends up i guess but uh either way they're getting the shit kicked out of him by saginaw they are fucking unbelievable like saginaw and like hunter hates kind of taken he kind of gets the um the short end of the stick there with all the guys they brought at the deadline because now he's like firmly playing wing and like Owen Beck's going all the way off for them. But he had a big game one. He scored the game. Uh, he scored twice. I mean, um, I think that was a for the game winner and then the empty net insurance goal. Um, so he's got two goals in those three games. They're up 3 0. Um, 
But God, is he fun to watch though when he does get the puck? Jesus Christ, the insane skill, the shot, like it is. He is a fun player. Um, Petrovsky's got the assist, but I guess we don't have to talk about Petrovsky. He doesn't count anymore in the prospect roundups. We don't have to even touch on him. Um, yeah. In the OHL, Kumpelainen, they're up 3 0 on Barry. Um, he had a rough, probably, first two games, um, but game three in the 5 1 win, he was an animal. Second start of the game, scored a goal, had eight shots on net, uh, went 11 for 21 at the face off dots. So he's got a goal in those three games. Um, he's a uh, 40 for 62 at the playoff dot regular season. He finished with 28 goals, 28 assists. We love the symmetry there. Um, he looks like a player. So love him. We'll shift over WHL. Riley height is going all the way off. Shocking. They're up three Oh on Spokane. First game, two assists, second game, three assists, second start of the game. And then he had another assist, uh, last night in a four, two win. So they're up three, nothing. He's got six assists, four games, uh he's not shooting the puck he's being exclusively a playmaker he's decided um and he's doing it unbelievably well he looks phenomenal every time he touches the puck every time he's on the ice he looks noticeable um and just running the show quite often for prince george they're a problem um in the whl um and he did finish the year with 117 points in 66 games third in WHL scoring, second in assists, and first in power play assists. Um, and then Kalen Parker, they're up 2 nothing on Brandon Weekings. Um, he's having not the strongest first couple games. Dash three, three shots on net, four pims. But um, either way, it was fun watching, or it has been fun watching him play with Matejchuk a whole lot this year. Um yeah, uh, so 65 games regular season, 36 points, 42 pins, plus 15. You didn't um, even like Matej Chuck in his draft here. Yeah, you're right. He was not my draft son. Um, and the only guy we have to talk about, Daniil Yarov in the KHL. They're in the semifinal right now. Um, they beat Spartak in the quarterfinal um, in ga- th- just this week. Game five, he did put up two goals. He's been a beast. They won game one today in the semifinal against Avto. So, Um, Let me pull up the actual playoff stats for him so far. Three goals, five points, 10 pims. um, Right around 47% the face-off dot. He's primarily playing center, um, but he's pretty much just doing the same shit that he did in the regular season. He looks phenomenal. I still don't, unless I just completely missed it, which is very possible given the last few weeks, he still hasn't actually signed that contract, has he? (laughs) It's driving me nuts. I'm like, is he saying Is he going? Who knows? But it's weird that he hasn't signed yet. Um, But he looks great so far in the playoffs, and they're going to make a real run here. Interesting, though, because uh, someone commented here. uh, So, Cole, does Ogren coming over give Yurov a little more bump to come over? I think it's the opposite. I think that makes it less likely that he's playing in the NHL because it's just one more person to compete with when he already is worried about getting a shot in the NHL. He does not want to play in Iowa. He's been pretty clear about that. I'm going to be surprised if he comes over. Yeah, I mean, I'll be surprised. I'm also just surprised that he hasn't signed the contract. That thing. He's undecided. Um, yeah. yeah. I would say that I don't really know if Ogren coming over or anyone really, like, who's a DDOT being here. I don't know if that pushes him one way or the other. I think no, he's a very guess- confident kid in his own right. I think he's not really worried about – I would be shocked if it was like that was – Anything that was factoring in his decision, to be honest with you. Fair. Uh, if anything, I'd say it doesn't help him come over. Right. Yeah. Field, maybe it's neutral. Yeah, I think it. Uh, yeah, I do think it's neutral. I think going, him playing another year in the KHL is more than I fine. Like that would probably the right move, to be honest with you, because given how, especially with the year Iowa had this year, how the year they had last, like past couple of years, really, like him playing for Metal Leg, they're just they're just gonna continue to be nasty and one of the best teams in the KHL and he's going to be continue to play center there. I think it's, that's probably the right move is to let him go play another year in the KHL. Um, especially just like in the environment that he's in the playing time he's getting the experience he's getting. I think it's a good thing. So we'll see, but he looks great again in the playoffs. So um, all around success. And we are looking forward to Liam Ogren's debut in Iowa. Boom. Well, I think we wrapped it up then. Under two hours. Out, which I thought it was going to be a lot shorter. So, uh, hey, did the thing. 
Z will allegedly be in Minnesota. Maybe you'll see we'll him. Live. Just look around for a six foot seven guy who looks just like Zidane Chara when his jaw was shattered, and that's him. That's me for sure. Um, I don't really know how we're going to do this next week, but I will be there and not here. So it's going to be the first in person one. We'll, we'll do. Kind we'll of? do a live one from my couch. It's perfect. That's going to be interesting. It'll Wait, be old yeah. school. Like, and and we'll just have MXC running in the background, so we'll just get random giggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting. It'll be old school. I'll be holding my mic like I used to, just in my hand, which is always funny. Um, maybe not. I don't actually know. But either way, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks to all the 400 bots that are still here. Uh, and for the two people that are still listening live, we love you. Uh, um, and uh Everyone, see you live in person next week, folks. Selfish plug. Anyone that's watching live or listening on podcast, please. I don't care if you even listen to the episode. I'd, I'd love it if you did. But please go to the separate channel outside of the Soda Pod and subscribe to Fellowship of the Rink. And I mean, the only way are. Joe Smith agreed to do it, Joe is not going to do it if he's going to be affil- affiliated yeah. on the same umbrella as Spoke. He's like, get that fucker away from me. So, you know, That's give, uh, do it for Joe. Do it for Joe. He's a lot more professional and polished. So he's like, I prefer to not be associated with the one named Spoke Spock. 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 People forget. I can't. Spock, apparently. Yes. That, that is, uh, is that a, a dev throwback? That was either you or Isha. Dev gave no, me the um, no, no. F- fuck you for thinking that I'm the one that can't fucking read. Everyone, uh, <clears throat> nope, that one hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one that definitely could pronounce it. Everyone comes in, they're like spocked. Oh, no, no, I think Isha was spocked, and I think that Dev was spooked. Spooked. It was the yeah. 10K guys. They thought it was and, spooked. And I was I'm like, like, there's one out. Can you guys fucking read? Like. O-K-E is oak. There, there, there's no there's no question about this. Just one O. Forget the other. There's one O. There's one. I don't know. Doesn't one. make sense yeah, to me. Spooked. Spooked Z. Yeah. Like a, like a Halloween Halloween account? Like a yeah, pumpkin guy? Yeah, that's me. That's right. Nailed it. All right. But whatever. well, we'll get I will literally that. see you people in person in a week, which is fucking blowing my mind. Scary. It is terrifying. And for those of you watching, we will send it out with the intro clip instead of the outro clip, just because you all need to be fired up coming out of this. Anyone that's just listening, if not for any other reason, that is why you're going to go back to YouTube and at least watch the first 20 seconds of the episode or the last 20, whatever you prefer. But, uh, yeah, I guess live from the couch next week if he makes it here alive. Early flight. It's an early flight. Martin's gay for Stop. robots. God damn you, son of a bitch. Rocket end it. <laughs>